Hello and welcome to pre-season testing ahead of the 2027 Formula 1 season. With regulation changes to the aerodynamics of cars, let's find out who has got the new regulations right and who has got them wrong. Mercedes come into the season after winning once again the Constructors World Championship for a 13th time. They started testing slow, finishing day one third fastest, opting to focus on long run pace before they showed what they can do on day two in the fastest time. On day three they focus on race pace, once again finished third fastest which suggests Mercedes have a quicker body car than a race car but many teams up and down the paddock believe they are sandbagging and that there is more in that Mercedes. Lamborghini was the last team to launch their car this season as they start what they are calling a new era for the team as they go for an all new black and green design. They launched two liveries the first one being a one off livery for the first round of the season. There was transfer news at Lamborghini is after a poor season at the team Oscar Piastri has been dropped and is being replaced by out of contract from Ferrari Carlos Sainz who was unwilling to negotiate with the Italian team over their poor performances despite nearly winning a race in Monza last season. And beginning to believe the experience of Sainz will add consistency to the team as they hope this car will take them to their first constructors title but it wasn't the best of tests for the team but finished P7 on day 1 and day 2 after struggling to find a balance in the car as the data from the simulator compared to what they, they were seeing on track doesn't align. On the final day of the test Sainz crashed at turn 4 after a brake failure which ruined their final day only finishing P9. The team have admitted that they have a lot of work to do ahead of the first race as they look to have got these new regulations wrong. Red Bull are hoping to make big gains this season as last season was their strongest in years picking up multiple podiums and a win for Max at his home Grand Prix at Zandvoort. There was rumours that Max was leaving the team but he sees potential in this car and it's also contracted till 2028 to Red Bull. It was a slow start to testing for the team, finishing day one P6 after having some issues with the battery in the car which limited their running. They looked quicker on day two, finishing P5 after focusing on race runs and completing the most amount of laps of the day. They continued to focus on on long run pace on the final day of testing, finishing P7. Red Bull are hoping to be back towards the front of the grid this year more competitively and more frequently after the inconsistencies of last year's car cost Max P2 in the Drivers' Championship. They still don't look to be where they are hoping to be, but are they just sandbagging? Ferrari entered the season with a new driver lineup after sites left for Lamborghini and they have brought in Lando Norris from McLaren. Lando said that although Although he liked where McLaren were going, he saw more potential in Ferrari and couldn't wait to go racing in red. After day one, it looked to be the best choice for Lando as Ferrari were fastest on day one with no issues and completing the most amount of laps as they focused mostly on race long run pace. They seemed to turn the engine down for day two and three, finishing P6 and P4. The Italian team are quietly confident they have a good car this year. McLaren welcomed back P street to the team after being dropped by Lamborghini replacing the departed Lando Norris. Although his poor season last year Zac Brown believes a return to the team where it all started for him in Formula 1 will allow him to find his form again that he had at the end of the 2025 season. This year's McLaren looks to be quick as the more they pushed it the quicker the car got. Day 1 they finished after admitting they spent more of the day finding the best setup for the car to get it in its window. Day 2 they focus mostly on long runs finishing P2 before they focus on low fuel runs leaving them top of the times. McLaren believe that there is more pace to unlock in the car as they look confident for the first race. Alpin had the fastest car at the start of last season but failed to get the results out of it and then fell off massively as the season went on. They could have very easily won the first two races in Australia and Miami last year. Reliability looked to once again be hurting them as they had an engine pop on day one of the test, plating the least amount of laps of the day, finished P8. The car in the right window it still does look to be quick. They finished day two, P3. Day three, they managed to get good long run data, finishing P5. And like last season, but they look to be a certain midfield team this year, but we will find out in the first race of the season. Aston Martin on their day had a 
quick car last season as he picked up multiple podiums with rookie Taylor Petrea after he massively outperformed his more experienced teammate Lance Stroll last year. Petrea has now set the bar high but can this car allow him to go even better this season? As the Martins finished day one P5, their plan for day one was to just push the car as much as possible until it broke but the reliability of the car was bulletproof as they completed the second most amount of laps on day one. Day two they focused more on setup of the car finishing P4. On the final day of the test they focused on low fuel runs and finished the day P2. They looked to have a strong car this year when it's in the right window and Aston Martin admit there is still work to do. Alfa Romeo like Alpine last season had a strong start picking up a podium in the first race but just like Alpine fell off as the season went on. However this season looks to be a complete 180 as the car this year looks slow as they finished day one P9. The car looks to be missing a lot of downforce in the high speed corners making the car very very unpredictable, something Yuki Tsunoda was not happy about. Day 2, they had multiple issues with the car, with the brakes and hydraulics, meaning they only completed a few amount of laps on that day. Day 3, they did show some pace in the car, as they could push the car more after fixing the issues of Day 2, finishing Day 3, P6. However, they know what the weaknesses of the car are, and are looking to find solutions ahead of the first race. Alpha Diary had the best season of the career in 2026, picking up their first points in Miami. They come into the season with closer ties to Red Bull and it seems to show as they finish day one of the test P2 which was a surprise to not only the paddock but AlphaTauri themselves as they were hoping to be more in the midfield fight this season. However day two they appeared to have turned the engine down finishing the day P8 and collecting good long run data. They also finished the final day of the test P8 as they continued to focus on long run pace. Could Alpha Tauri be the surprise of the season after their day one pace or are they still in the midfield fight? We'll have to wait and see at the first race. Williams had another poor season last year finishing 10th in the Constructors Championship but they did show some moments of class such as Albon's front row start at Imola last year. However it looks to be another difficult season this year as although it is quick in a straight line it's slow in the high and low speed corners is the car. They finished the first day in P10 but did get some good long run data. Day 2 was a nightmare as they had a technical issue with the car which meant they missed hours of running time and finished the day P11. Day 3 wasn't great either so they focused more on the setup finishing the day P10. Haas had another horrible season last year being the only team not to score a single point all season long despite having chances such as in Mexico. It looks once again to be a long season ahead as they completed the least amount of laps overall over the 3 day test. Day one they finished p11 after some technical issues kept them in the garage day two they managed to get some more running attempting low fuel runs giving them p10 on day two day three they were slowest again as the car looks to be slow everywhere on the straights high and low speed corners it looks like it's going to be a difficult year for Haas. F1 announced another 16 race season starting here in Bahrain before we go down under to Australia and then head to Europe for the first race in Italy for the season at Imola. We then stay in Europe and head to Monaco before heading to North America for the Canadian Grand Prix. We then go to Austria for the first time in a couple of seasons and for the first sprint weekend of the season. We then go to the home of Formula 1 at Silverstone for the British Grand Prix before we round off the first half of the season in Belgium. We start the second half of the season once again in the Netherlands at Zandvoort where Max is looking for back to back wins at his home Grand Prix. We then go to Monza for the second race in Italy then to Japan. We then head to Kota for the American Grand Prix for the first time since 2023. We then go to Mexico and Brazil. We then once again have a late European race in Portugal before we finish the 2027 Formula 1 season off in Abu Dhabi. That's it for pre-season testing ahead of the 2027 Formula 1 season. We know a rough order of the field but we'll only know the true order when those 500 lights go out in Bahrain.